This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to deal with gal and ticks. Let's get to it. So the first thing we are going to do is I am going to go over the mechanics of each of these creatures. We are going to fight them here out in the open and then I will go over to the Mistlands and show you what it's like to actually fight them in the Mistlands because I realize this is not an accurate representation of fighting them in the Mistlands. However, it's easier for me to show you their different mechanics here. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is ticks. Now I'm going to summon three of them at a time because that is how you will pretty much always fight them. They always come in groups. I've never seen just a single tick running around. Also the gal drop three at a time. Here we have the ticks and I'm going to let them get on me. So what they do is they latch onto you and they stagger you. You can see my stagger bar is filling up there and they suck your blood and they deal 10 to 11 damage a second with the armor that I'm wearing here. I'm wearing a full set of the Fenris armor and this is the food that I have eaten. One of the things you can do to quickly get them off of your back is roll. If you notice when they jump and attach to me, if I roll, they fall off. Now do note that I think there is a bug currently because there are times when you roll and they won't get off of you. They stay stuck to you for some reason. So if you take a look here, if I roll, you can see they're falling off pretty much every time. But do note that I have had instances where they will stay stuck to me even when I am rolling. The other thing that you can do to get them off of you quickly and easily is anything that does AOE damage. So for example, I have a hammer here and if they're stuck to me and I use the hammer, you can see that not only knocks them back, but it also knocks them off. So it's super handy to have an item like this on you when you are fighting ticks so that you can knock them off fast and easy and damage them. Now the other thing that you can use is the pole arms. If you take a look here, you can see it does nice AOE damage and it kills them in one hit, which is really nice. I also have it fully upgraded and I do not have the iron sledge upgraded. So there's a big difference there. So highly advise upgrading this. This is super handy in the Mistlands for a lot of different reasons, one of which is dealing with ticks. I want to pause right here because I forgot to mention something. If they are attached to the front of you, you can just kill them with any weapon at all. It does not have to be an AOE weapon. If they are on the front of you and you swing a weapon, you will hit them. However, if they are attached to your back, your only options for getting them off of you are rolling an AOE weapon or having your friend attack. Them. Now do note that you can block to keep them off of you. If you take a look here, if they jump at me and I am holding block, I can keep them off of me as long as I am facing them. If they get behind you, this will not work and I'll demonstrate that. You can see there I turned around and they were able to jump onto me. So as long as I have them in front of me and I'm facing towards them when they jump, I will continue to knock them back and then I can come in like that and kill them quick and easy. Of course, this also works if you have a shield as well and they are not going to stagger you for nearly as much nor is much damage going to get through and you can see you get a massive knockback here if you use a large shield like the tower shield that I'm using here. Now when it comes to dealing with the gal I highly advise using an arbalist and that is because it doesn't drain any stamina and allows you time to aim. I mean it does drain stamina but it's only when it loads. You can see there it only drained a little bit and it's going to drain less and you're going to load faster as you level it up. Its ammo is relatively expensive. The cheapest thing you can make for it is the bone bolt, which takes eight bones and two feathers. So it'd be a good idea to have a bone farm. However, the iron bolts are relatively cheap too, and iron is relatively prevalent over in the Mistlands. So it only takes one bar, eight wood and some feathers. The choice is up to you, whatever you want to use. I'm going to show you the lowest level ammo and what it's like to fight them with the lowest level ammo. Now, if you don't like the Arbalest, that's fine. Use a normal bow, whatever whatever bow you want to use, but you are going to need something that is ranged to deal with them. So your options are pretty limited. So here we go. We have a gal. Now they do drop ticks and they do this. They shoot two of those exploding bombs that will light you on fire. You can see they did just drop a bunch of ticks there. I'm going to take care of them real quick. When you shoot them, if you shoot them anywhere other than their belly, you are going to do less damage. I'm going to aim for the top there. You can see I did 135. If I run underneath of him and I shoot it in the belly, you will see that it is its weak spot and it does 167 and we got yellow damage. Also know that dealing with them is much easier to do if you stay underneath of them and towards the back. They cannot hit you if you stay underneath of them and towards the back of them. Now I know this is difficult to do in some situations, especially if they drop ticks because then they have a chance to get in front of you. As you can see now, now he has a chance to 
turn around, but what I'm going to do is try to position myself underneath of it, equip my pole arm here and deal with the ticks and get back underneath of him. And of course there's a hole there because of course he would want to go to where the hole is, but as long as you stay towards the back of them and underneath of them, they can't really hit you. That's what I'm going to attempt to do. And they're always going to attempt to try to put you in front of them. As you can see, he's flying off because he wants to get me in front of him so that he can hit me or she, whatever it is. Now I'm going to go back to my arbalist and I am going to just wait and try my best to stay underneath of it and shoot it. Now in the mist lands, you also have the option to get above them and when you do that they will also try to reset because they can't shoot up they can only shoot down and you can see it's just constantly running away from me because it wants to put distance between us so that it can then shoot me so if i shoot this thing and get its attention and i fly up here to demonstrate you can see it wants to get above me so that it can shoot down on me because it can't shoot upwards so if you are in the mist lands and you're close by to something that you can jump up on like one of the rocky ledges you can do that to get this thing to take time to reset do note that if you do get on top of them they can shake you off it is fun to get on top of them if you get above them but you can see there he was able to shake me off so riding them isn't really a thing you can for a little bit and you can get a couple of hits in on them if you use uh any basically any weapon and you go towards the front of them but you can see there once again it's short-lived because they will shake you off your best bet is to do your best to stay underneath of them and shoot them from below. You note that fire resistance potions and the Fenris armor, one or the other, not both together, will reduce the amount of damage that you take. If you take a look here, you can see that in this clip, I am taking 16.5 damage when I get hit with back-to-back -back shots, and then I drink a fire resistance wine or barley wine, and it reduces my damage down to 8.5. After taking back-to-back -back shots wearing just the Fenris Fenris armor, I am only taking four damage per tick on the fire. However, having the Fenris armor on and drinking a barley wine and getting hit with back-to-back -back shots, you can see I am taking 4.1. So wearing the Fenris armor and drinking the barley wine do not stack. You either have fire resistance or you don't. So we are over here in the mist lands and there is one of the gals nearby. You can hear it, but I don't see it. Now I am currently cloaked in God and everything else, but I am going going to turn that off for this fight and I'm going to turn it off before I know where it's at because I want to show you what would happen and how you would normally come up on it. Usually you're going to hear them way before they see you or you see them if you are listening for them. So one of the first things I advise doing is not trying to fight these things until you have the feather cape and that is for multiple reasons. One, it's going to make your traversal much easier and two, you're going to want to get up high in order to try to get the jump on one of them. And if you are up high, you may need to jump off the side of a mountain relatively fast in order to keep from getting hit. And if you have to do that, you want to have feather fall. So I have ghost and God turned off. What I'm going to do is try my best to get up high before this thing sees me. Now, once again, I don't know where it's at. Now, the reasons you want to get up high first is twofold. One, it's going to help you spot it easier. And two, it's going to allow you to get the jump on it before it sees you. Right, right there it is. See how easy it was for me to see it? Now, if I was down below, it would have easily spotted me before I was able to spot it. So now what I'm going to do is attempt to shoot it, and we're gonna use the arbalist to do that, and we're just gonna shoot the top of it. Now I know, like I told you, the bottom is the weak spot. Of course, you wanna shoot for the bottom if you can, but in order to get its attention here, I'm gonna try my best to just shoot it to get it to come over here, but right now, it does not seem to care or my arrows are falling short. So what I'm gonna do now now is attempt to jump and glide across the way here and hopefully it does not have any friends with it and actually this is a relatively good spot to fight it it does have some friends with it so we're going to want to take care of those first before we try to fight this thing though so i lost them i'm not 100 sure how many there were or where it went but it appears that it has left it was right here i will really want to kill it because i want to go down there to fight it but you have to take your time and be very very careful you do not want to try to fight one of these things with the other seekers around and i don't know where it went so what i'm going to attempt to do then is kite it over this way 
because fighting it around here should be relatively safe and I have things to hide behind if I need to hide behind things. So once again, let's see if we can actually shoot it from here. Okay, there we go. I finally hit it, got its attention. It should be coming over this way. Now, while it's coming over here, I got plenty of time to shoot it as many times as I can before it gets too close. And I'm gonna have plenty of warning when it swells up in order to try to hit me. And that is the warning there. So now what I'm gonna do is jump back here and there's the little buddy that I did not want. Okay, we got him taken care of. We got hit a couple of times there, but uh, we are good. So now what I'm gonna do is attempt to get under this thing and stay under it so that it can't hit me. And every time I shoot it, I gotta reposition because I knock it back a little bit. There we go. And now it's gonna get too much distance from me. So what I'm gonna do is attempt to move behind some stuff, keep stuff between you and it, and you will be okay because it won't be able to hit you. So now in order for it to hit me, it's going to have to reposition itself over top of me. Now our stamina has regen, so we are good to go there. And I've lost it, so I'm gonna try to get it to reset. And in order to do that, I know it went over this way. So what I'm gonna do is do my best to get up as high as possible. That'll force it to move up if it wants to attack me. There it is. It can shoot you if you are the tiniest bit in front of it. So keep that in mind. This is a very, very bad spot right here. We do not want to be down here. I had to jump back down here because it had to jump on me and I couldn't see it. Actually, I think this might actually be a good spot. I may be wrong. So if I'm right here and it peeks its head out, it can shoot directly down. Keep that in mind. You, that's why you want to stay behind it as much as possible. Okay, we swing and a miss there. Let's see if we can get over here. I want it in an area where I can get under it again. And this is not a very good area for that. We got a good shot. Let's take it. And if we can load, I should be able to get another shot before it spins around. There it is. One more and it should be done. I just got to be careful that I don't get hit here. And there it is. Blind shot for the win. So there you go. That's how you would go about doing it if you're fighting them in the Mistlands. The, the most important thing is to... Make sure you get the drop on it before it gets the drop on you. If it hits you and lights you on fire before you see it, just get out of the way. Just run away and reset and come back later because you have a much lower chance of being successful once it already has the drop on you and it's hitting you, especially if you don't see it. If you do see it and it does hit you once or twice, you're fine or you should be fine if you have enough HP to deal with something like that. Once again, being in the Mistlands, I highly advise eating a lot of high health food, but if you do not see it and it's hitting you, just run away. All right, well, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to deal with these things, some tips, some pointers, all of that good stuff. If you found this video helpful and informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for other awesome Valheim guides, you can find the link to one of those on the screen right now. I wanna give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.